Well, we're going to sing together uh, this song, uh, Nothing Else, uh, by, by uh, Cody Cairns. And um, I just think it's a real great song to, to meditate on in this time where God's doing a lot in our a lot in a lot in our lives at the moment if especially if we're allowing him that is I think it's a great opportunity to spend time in his presence to draw close to him um I think it's a really good opportunity for us to draw close to him and spend some time at his feet and I know that's exactly what um God's been challenging me and it seems many people with so Let's uh, just really declare that, that we want to spend time at Jesus' feet. We want to draw close to him. So, Lord, we just want to draw close to you. We want more of your presence in this time, Father. We want you to open our hearts and our minds to you, Lord. Any hard part of our hearts, we just want to surrender it to you, Lord. We just ask that you just move into our lives. And we want to say your will be done, Father. Caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Yeah I'm not here for blessing Jesus, you don't tell me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you, yeah. I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song. So take me back to where we started and open up my heart to you. I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough to so take me back to where we started and open up my heart to you. I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't tell me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, Jesus, nothing else will do, I just want you, nothing else, 
nothing else, Jesus, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, no, Lord, nothing else will do. Yeah, nothing else. Caught up in your presence I just want to sit at your feet oh, 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 oh. I never want to I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you I just want you Yes, let's take this moment to just draw close to Him If you want to close your eyes and put your hands out before you you can, however you feel led Let's just take this moment and draw close to our King our victorious King, King of Kings the only Lord the only Savior, the only way, the truth and the life that is Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else. Nothing else will do, I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, Jesus, nothing else will do, I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, Jesus. I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment Never want to leave. I'm not here for blessing. Jesus, you don't know me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you More than anything that you can do I just want you
Church. Welcome to another online Sunday service. It's great to be with you all again. Today we have Dave Malloy preaching for us. Um, we also have some notices from Derek and we have a kids live talk from Helen Jenkinson. Just before you guys um, go through to the rest of the service, I just wanted to highlight to you guys um, a new scheme that we are launching um, as a church. Leadership have asked me to um, announce it and share about it this morning. Um, it's called Pray for a Street. So what we have decided to do, um, obviously we, we can't um, be physically present meeting as a church at the moment, but we really want to be praying for our community during this time. Um, we don't just want to wait until we meet back as a church, but we really want to be strategic in praying for our community um, right now for the things that they're going through right now um, and so what we are going to do is this we have got a list of streets for Metro Christian Centre Berry and we have got a list of streets for Metro Christian Centre Whitefield um, I think there's around 20 on each list um, but basically if you can pick a street for Berry and you can pick a street in Whitefield um, and you can commit to praying for that every week or every day, whatever it is that you want to commit to, whatever works best for you. Um, but we're trying to cover all of these streets in prayer. They should come up on your screen now. So go ahead and pick one um, just for the sake of being strategic so that we make sure all the streets are covered. Um, if you can comment, if you're watching through Facebook, if you just comment um, on the video saying which street you have chosen, um, then that just tells us. Um, if you're watching us through YouTube, then you can um, just message me personally. Just tell me which streets you are praying for in Berry and Whitefield, um, and then we can make sure that all the streets are prayed for. But yeah, really excited about it, guys. Um, really passionate that we as a church should be praying for our community. So. I'm really excited to be launching that this week. Um, I'll hand over now. So we're going to have notices from Derek. Then we are going to have the Kids Life Talk from Helen. And then we are going to have a preach from Dave Malloy. Okay, be blessed, guys. Have a great Sunday. Welcome, everyone. Karibu. Maseo sita eaya zalathini atafu. Tafu tani. Kwanza ufalme wake, na haki yake, na yote, na teo hitaji ata pira. Benvenuto. Mateo 6, versi 38. Cerca prima il suo regno e la sua giustizia e tutto ciò di cui ha bisogno ti sarà dato. Mali Geyang Pagdating Mateo Anima na Talata Tatlum Putatlu Hanapin Muna Ang Kanyang Kaharian At Ang Kanyang Katuiran At Ang Lahat Ang Kaliangal Mo E Ibibige Se Io Bienvenue, Matthieu 6, vers 103. Cherchez d'abord son royaume et sa justice, et tout ce dont vous aurez besoin vous sera donné. Welcome to everyone, welcome church, and I trust you are coping with this strange, complicated situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, some of you are lonely on your own, but of course, even in families, we can get stressed. Some are anxious as they see their loved ones going to work to, uh, to hospital or care homes um, or supermarkets delivering goods. So what does Jesus say when we're worried, when we feel worried? Well, Matthew 6.27 says, Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Another version says, Who can add another inch to their height? Well, I have to say, if I thought that by worrying, I could make myself six feet tall, I would have done it already. But I know I can't. 
So what is the antidote to worrying? Well, Jesus tells us in Matthew 6.33, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all that you need will be given to you. As well as things, as well as food, as well as clothing, he can give you peace, he can give you comfort, he can give you a sense of his presence, which by far is the best place to be. Thank you to all those of you who are maintaining contact with others. Ideally, everyone in Berry and Whitefield churches uh, should be in contact with someone. But if you know of anyone who's been left out, then please let us know so we can rectify it. There's still no one in attendance at either church, but if you want to contact us, then this can be done through life group leaders, the elders, etc., by phone, text, email. The leadership team, we still hold regular prayer meetings on Friday nights via a system called Zoom. We stay in our own home, but we can see and hear other people via our computers or mobiles. A list of prayer topics is put on the MCC Berry website on Fridays. Please remember Pat's family now, uh, daughter Fran and sons Peter and David as they wait for the funeral tomorrow. It's taking place at Overdale Crematorium in Bolton at 11am. So if you can bear those in prayer, that would be good. Mama Helena, she's, she's home, she's recovering now from this allergic reaction. Maureen Foster is, is at home. She's suffering from this diverticulitis, which is an inflammation of the uh, intestine. Uh, she's been seen to by a nurse coming to see her and offering advice, etc. So if you can bear those in mind, that would be really good. Thank you for the feedback that, uh, from the sermons and, and the, the Bible studies, which have been shown on online midweek and uh, Sundays. These are still available on the MCC Berry website, on Facebook and YouTube. Well, that's it for now. May the peace of God rest upon you now and evermore. Hi everyone, it's good to see you this morning. Uh, for uh, Kids Life this morning, what we're going to do, we're going to look at um, a story from Jeremiah chapter 36. And if you remember, over the last few weeks, we've been learning about Jeremiah and about all the uh, things that God told him to do. Jeremiah was God's messenger. And uh, he had a message to send to Israel because they were being very, very naughty. They were ignoring everything that God had to say to them. But because God loved them so much... He sent Jeremiah to warn them what would happen if they continued being naughty, if they continued be ignoring God. So in our story this week, God tells Jeremiah to get a scroll and write down what God wanted to say to the people. Now, in those days, they didn't have Bibles like we do. They had big rolled up pieces of paper called scrolls, which they wrote things down on. So Jeremiah called his friend Baruch and Baruch wrote down everything that God had told Jeremiah. So Jeremiah says to Baruch, go and tell everybody at the temple what God has said. Perhaps if they hear what God says, they'll turn away from doing bad things and follow me again. So Baruch went and did everything that Jeremiah said. Do you think, though, that the people were happy? No, not at all. The king's advisers heard what Baruch has to say. And they said, we need to tell the king what Baruch has said. But Baruch, the king is not going to be very happy. So you and Jeremiah need to go and hide. So the officials took the scroll to the king. 
Do you think the king was pleased when he read it? He was furious. He took the scroll and he threw it in the fire. The king showed that he wasn't really bothered about what God was saying at all. He didn't care. He was saying that he was better than God. And he thought that by burning the scroll, he'd get rid of God's words. Do you think God was pleased with the king? Not at all. He told Jeremiah to write the scroll again and tell the king that someone was going to take his place as king and disaster was going to come to Israel. The king thought that if he burned God's words, then they wouldn't exist anymore. Did he succeed? No. Thousands of years later, we're still reading God's uh, words in the Bible. Have you ever thought, though, that the Bible is God's message to us? It's exciting. God says really, really exciting things in the Bible. In the book of Psalms, it says that God's word is a lamp for our feet and a light to our path. Imagine you were going out for a midnight walk. You need to have a torch to show you which way to go. And God's word's a bit like that. Sometimes we don't know what to do. We don't know which path to take in our life. We don't know what the right thing to do is, but God's word tells us. It also says that it's a light. Is anybody, any of you um, scared of the dark? Well, it's a bit like that. If you, As long as you put the light on, you're not scared anymore. And sometimes we can be really scared about what's happening in our life. Maybe you're scared at the moment about Corona. But we know that if we read God's word, God's word shows us that it's okay to be scared. However, God is bigger than what we're scared about. And it can make us less scared of the things that we worry about. You know, there are millions of Christians all over the world who live in countries where it's against the law to even have a Bible in their house. People still hide them, though, and people still risk getting caught because they know that God's words are so important. And if you're in mine and Steph's kid life group, maybe you'd like to find out what life is like for children who live in a country where God's word is banned. And if you want to do that, if you have a look at the Open Doors website, it tells you details about what it's like living in a country where you can't read the Bible without being arrested or the fear of being arrested and how you can't read uh, and where it's against the law to speak about Jesus. So this week, while we're in uh, lockdown, why don't you use this time to actually get to know what God says in the Bible? If you've got a Bible at home, get it out and read some amazing stories of what God has done and what God continues to do. You know, it says God is still alive. He's still talking through his word. And what, what happened to the people long ago, we still can learn from today. So remember, God's word is brilliant. Let's pray that we have an interest in our hearts to read it, to understand it, and most importantly, do what it says. Good morning, church. Greetings to you all from the members of our group. We miss having fellowship with you all and look forward to when this lockdown is over and we can celebrate together around the Lord's table. This morning we're going to be looking at Psalm 29 and this is titled in some versions as the voice of the Lord in the storm. <clears throat> During the reading you'll notice that it repeats the name of the Lord 18 times and uses the phrase the voice of the Lord seven times. When these factors came to my attention, it made me curious as to why, but we'll have more about that at the end. <clears throat> so what can we say about this psalm? Well, simply put, it's a song of praise to God the King, as described in verses 1 and 2. 
The psalm also uses themes about the power behind the storms in 3 to 9 and the victory over floodwaters in verses 10 to 11 to, and to help us <clears throat> to try and help us in our understanding. Verse 1 then, praise the Lord you heavenly beings, praise his glory and power and in a way we are all heavenly beings because we are one with the Lord therefore we should gladly be giving him praise not just now but at all times obviously verse 2 the praise praise the Lord the Lord's glorious name bow down before the Holy One when he appears I think this when when he appears could mean when he's in garments of worship or in his beautiful temple there are many biblical passages representing the idea of the beauty of holiness and each of them associates the act of worship or praise with the concept of understanding the beauty of holiness which should compel us all to true worship and praise now we may have difficulty in understanding this because we cannot fully comprehend we see through a glass darkly as it says in Corinthians <coughs> The voice of the Lord is heard on the seas. The glorious God thunders and his voice echoes over the ocean. The glory of God thunders, the association of thunder and the voice of the Lord suggests this psalm was prompted by David having witnessed a great storm, hearing and feeling the power of thunder and associating it with the voice of God. His voice echoes over the ocean this phrase made me really curious because we don't normally uh, or generally associate the ancient Hebrews as a seafaring people or that they saw the sea as dangerous and foreboding but if you look on a map you can see at least two major ports on the coast so, the, so there must have been shipping and trading taking place in those times when we look at Psalm 107 we see in verse 23 another description of stormy waters. Also remember other references like the disciples being in the boat with Jesus in the storm, not to mention the shipwrecks suffered by the Apostle Paul. So there's plenty of references. So perhaps, but knowing these, perhaps we can understand a bit more clearly. Verse four, the voice of the Lord is heard in all its might and majesty. The psalmist David knew that powerful voice of God and recognised the majesty of God. Not only David, but others had this same sense of God, where in 2 Samuel 22, it says, Then the Lord thundered from the sky, and the voice of the Almighty God was heard. <clears throat> Verse 5 of this psalm, The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars, even the cedars of Lebanon. And I think David here is using uh, the cedars of Lebanon because they were well known for their size and strength. Yet the Lord's voice is so strong that he splinters these mighty trees and sends their sm smashed remains far and wide. Again, we can imagine a mighty thunderbolt striking and shattering a strong cedar tree. David must have seen this and thought the voice of the Lord is like this even though even more powerful again the reference to the voice of the Lord David could see the effect of lightning bolts and understood they were an illustration of the power and effect of God's word verse 6 it says he makes the mountains of Lebanon jump like calves and makes Mount Hermon leap like a young bull <coughs> uh, these uh, Mount Hermon and the Mount regions of mountains that it's in overlook northern Israel and the verse says that it will shake before the power of God but let's not be afraid in Psalm 46 1 and 2 it reminds us that in these storms God is our shelter verse 7 and 8 the voice of the Lord makes the lightning flash his voice makes the desert shake. He shakes the desert of Kadesh. Now it's hard for us to imagine these conditions 
because we live in a mostly temperate climate. We don't extreme don't experience extreme and violent weather. Well, not very often, <clears throat> but so we can't really imagine how scary the unpredictable storms can be. We've not had to cope with violent earthquakes that move mountains like some countries, like it does in some countries. Again, going back to verse nine now, the Lord, Lord's voice shakes the oaks and strips the leaves from trees while everyone in his shout in the temple shouts glory to God. In his temples, everyone is saying glory. And David thought of how the thunder and lightning attract attention and give a sense of awe. This sense of glory is even more appropriately given to the Lord in his temple. There, the people of God do not tremble in fear of the storm, but in awe of their great God, to whom they say glory. One commentator says, it's also worthwhile for each believer to ask him or herself if he or she are among those who say glory. Does the word of God, the voice of God, still feel like thunder? If not, and for many of us this would be an honest but difficult assessment to make, he or she should humbly come to God and confess that his voice, his words, sound more like the drop of a paperclip than a thunderbolt. And then they should ask for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit to make a cold heart warm once again and dull hearing sharp once more. Just as a sideline, uh, the commentator, commentator tells us that in the early church, this psalm was often read to children or to the entire congregation during storms. Presume the, uh, the noise of the storm um, would be quelled by them listening to these words and knowing that God again was above this above the storms. So uh, verse 10 now, the Lord rules over the deep waters. He rules as king forever. <clears throat> The word rendered deep waters or flood is used elsewhere in reference to the deluge in Noah's time. And that being so, David's reflection on the flood reminds us of what a staggering expression it was of God's power and justice, where it says, even as in the days of the flood, when he destroyed creation with his power, but saved his own people. The Lord rules as king forever. The flood was a radical expression of God's authority. Yet his authority did not end many generations ago. The Lord continues to sit as king forever. One commentator considered the connection between the Lord sat enthroned at the flood and the Lord that sits as king forever. Verse 11. The Lord gives strength to his people and blesses them with peace. This is a, a reminder that he does rule. He gives strength, but he also blesses with peace. The Lord will give strength to his people. As David considered the earth shattering strength and authority of God, he recognized that God brought that same strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. And the power of God may come as a destructive storm upon creation and upon those who rebel against God. Yet God's people can be confident that he will bless them with peace and the strength of God comes to them as a comfort, not a storm. <clears throat> there are many references to the voice of the Lord elsewhere in the Bible and uh, I won't call them here. Um, but in my curiosity about the theme of the psalm and not fully understanding it at first reading, I put it to some of our group to see what their thoughts were. Something like doing a crowdfunding on knowledge, if you like. One suggestion was the importance of numerology in the Bible, especially the number seven. Another point to note was the fact that he repeats the name of the Lord 18 times in the psalm. So, but that's a lesson for somebody else, I think. This has been a, an interesting study and a growing experience. And a final thought, 
As the psalmist looked at the extraordinary natural, natural events around him and heard God's voice, we should be looking at the happenings of current events around us and be listening for God's voice while remembering how finely balanced is the line between life and death, especially with what is happening in the world at this time. So if in 2 Samuel 22 it says, the Lord thundered from the sky and the voice of Almighty God was heard, what I leave with you is a question. If the voice of the Lord is so strong and mighty, are we hearing it? And what are we doing about it? To finish now, Romans 15:6 reminds us, so that all of you, that's us together, may praise with one voice the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'll just finish and say, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, may God bless you. May the peace and love of God be with you at all the times. And may he bring you a sense of peace and knowledge in him and in hearing his voice. Thank you.